And it's good for us to be empowered with this knowledge because we're we moms, uh, we're wives, we've got daughters and we've got mothers. And uh, it leads me to my next speaker as well, Annabelle. Annabelle Lombard is originally from a wine farm in Lutzville. After matric, she studied at the Northwest University in Potchefstroom and had a graduate degree in business communication and works part-time at her church. She is a freelance writer and a working from her mother with two sons. Annabelle is married to Peter Lombard, one of our photographers. Here this morning, he is an engineer with an artistic side and he's our, one of our official photographers and the reason behind her testimony. The rest of Annabelle's bio will unfold as her story and her testimony is shared. Thanks Annabelle, please give her a warm hand. An extraordinary honor to be in the presence of such beautiful ladies. Thank you for the privilege to share my journey with you this morning in such a pretty setting. I believe inside every woman resides a warrior and a goddess. And it's during life's big battles you get to meet yours. This June marks the fourth anniversary of my breast cancer diagnosis. Six months after I weaned my baby, I discovered a lump. And Sandy would cringe, but Dr. Google assured me it could quite likely be a clocked milk duct. There was no family history of any cancers, and I was too young to qualify for a yearly mammogram. So I procrastinated a few months. But then my sister-in-law died of cancer. She was 38, leaving behind two preschoolers and a baby, so I felt nervous. So I went to my gynecologist, and she agreed with my post-breastfeeding theory, but suggested I take a trip to the female imaging company just to be sure. So I did. And as I was lying there in the bed with my baby sitting on my lap while they're performing the horrible um, biopsy, it started to dawn on me that something is potentially very wrong here. After an emotional weekend, I got a call that very clinically confirmed that the lump was cancerous. Now my initial reaction was very naive. I said to myself, this is very, very um, um, common and they should just rip it out and get it over with as soon as possible. Much like the five second rule for food on the floor. <laughs> but then came the second phase in which all cancer patients believe they are dying. You, are, you don't know where to start. You're overwhelmed with despair and implications threatens to overwhelm you. The, it, you search for information and you really can't compare yourself with anyone because every prognosis is unique. Gradually I realized I'm going to be very ill for at least six months. And at, as terrifying as it was, I then decided I have a choice now how to handle this and I have to man up for the sake of my husband and two small boys. Because I was only 36 and the cancer was very aggressive, it already started to spread to my lymph nodes, I had little choice in having a lumpectomy, chemotherapy and radiation. And I won't sugarcoat it, it was super scary and horrible. Um, but in that moment, I knew this was the beginning of a journey. The, the cancer treatment um, started for me with, with the, many of you may know it, the red devil. Um, two weeks into the chemo, you lose all of your hair and most of your dignity. And it's in that moment when you're stripped from all your securities, your health, your energy, when God sends in his angels, friends, family, medical personnel, and other survivors. And although you're surrounded with support, cancer leaves you intensely isolated. And in that vacuum, you have nothing but the Lord to lean on. And I can testify today, it is possible to go through fire and hell 
feeling nothing but indescribable peace and joy. The whole process, the, the cancer treatment and recovery process took about a year. And for me, um, and, and I speak to a lot of survivors, and they all seem to echo this, they won't trade this journey for anything. Um, people ask me how I coped. I started to write. I, I felt, it, I found it easier to communicate with my friends through email, and my husband set up a blog for me so that they can go and read rather than phone and visit me constantly. But I decided right from the start, it cannot be as depressing as some of the complaining about chemo blogs out there. So I deliberately try to keep it light and search for the humor in my situation. And can you believe it? There was plenty. Like the time when someone talked me into having permanent makeup before I lose my lashes. I did not realize before it was too late that permanent makeup actually is meaning tattooing your eyes. <laughs> An ink needle into your eyelids. But that's behind me. And, and I looked very pretty. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to blog about it. So soon my blog transcended into a very therapeutic tool which also helped others, something I never anticipated. And since last year, um, Finesse magazine gave me an even bigger platform to write weekly inspirational <coughs> stories um, online for them, something I enjoy very much. My oldest son was in great R at the time, and he took little notice of his mom's bald head and wig. But today, when he runs his hands through my hair, I feel so grateful and blessed for the opportunity to raise them myself. I know remission does not indemnify you from any future illness, but I choose to live my second chance with all that I can, and I want to encourage others to do the same. A brush with death changes you. It lets you rethink your priorities and purpose in life. Cancer seems to make you braver and a little fearless. And since then, I started to do water aerobics. I joined a mass choir called the Capital Singers. A few of them are here today. Thank you very much. And this August, 650 of us will perform in the State Theatre. I also agreed to ballroom lessons, to participate in the Fred Astaire and Dancing with the Survivors. Um, event for cancer and that was also a lot of fun. Life can change in an instant and you never know beforehand how you will cope but I realized everything in your life up to that point has already prepared you for your fight whatever battle you need to fight. So my message is today is simply this Check your breasts and go for tests. And in the meantime, don't wait for a disaster to happen. Make that choice every day to live your life like you have no time left. Thank you. <laughs>